barrier. To me, it's an amusing word. It can be really metaphorical or very literal. But jump on this wall behind me. It's a literal barrier. It's stopping me from going to the other side. Right now, let's just say I want to go to the other side. But this wall is stopping me. So how do I do it? Right now it's simple. There's a door there. So if I open it and walk all the way to here, I'll be on the other side. But is it really that simple? I'm still talking to all of you. And there's this very inconvenient red circle that I have to stand on until or unless I'm done talking. What is this? It's another barrier. So far, I've given you two examples of barriers, the wall and the circle. Let me give you another one. Do you all know that one particular person or group of people who seem to exist solely for the purpose of annoying you? They're always negative and go against everything you stand for. Like, if you accidentally look at them the wrong way, although the smallest, tiniest, most minuscule thing that's slightly wrong or bad, they'll call you out instantly with all their might and pride. You all know these people. Let's have a show of hands. Good. Because I have a few people like that myself. And I admit, I might be that person for quite a few of them. Right now, let's just call these people bullies. And for the sake of this example, let's say I'm just walking through school, heading to a class. I turn a corner and my biggest bully comes up. Now luckily, a teacher comes along, so I'm able to go past him easily. There's a large difference between my first two barriers and my last one. Did any of you notice it? No? The first two were barriers that I shouldn't go through. Not yet, anyway. But the third barrier, the bully, was a barrier that limited my potential, my ability to do good, and was a barrier that I should have put in all possible effort and used all my knowledge to break. It was what I like to call an MBB, a must break barrier. To let you all get the gist of what I mean by an MBB, I'll give you another example. I want you all to observe this one closely because if you do, you can also find out what I want you to do when you find an MBB. This MBB was caused by something that first arrived in China in late 2019. Do you all get it? Of course, I'm talking about COVID-19 or the coronavirus and the MBB that came with it, not being able to socialize. On the other side of this barrier were our friends and our family. Were our friends and our family. So, this barrier caused us to be lonely, so alone, we couldn't even talk with our friends or our family. So, what did we do? We resorted to something we already had quite a bit of experience with. Phone calls. Whether they were voice or video, they allowed us to talk with our friends and family from all around the world, no matter where we were stuck. But to be honest, I prefer a completely different way to socialize online. Do you all have those experiences that give you this unique feeling of pure joy when you do them? It could be anything. A trip to the park, going to a restaurant, going to an arcade, riding on a roller coaster, gliding through a zip line, or even something as simple as sitting at the dinner table with your family surrounding you. It could be anything. But it's something that completely immerses you when you're doing it and makes you miss it when you stop. Well, for me, that list of experiences has to include gaming with friends or family. 
This was a method of social interaction that shot up in popularity during the reigns of the pandemic. After all, we had nothing else to do. Games that emphasized being simple, easy to run, but highly social, skyrocketed in sales. Me and my friend, let's call him A. We both had seen videos of people playing games together on the internet, but even though we were attending online classes, we were still mostly just being at home. And we pretty much had the same idea. So he asked me, Hey Hassan, do you play this game? And honestly, I had discovered that game way before he did. It wasn't like the games that were simple or easy to learn, but it still required a whole lot of teamwork. Oftentimes, it was me and him on a call with two other strangers we couldn't complete the cake with well, on a team, fighting for our lives, and it was spectacular. It was so successful, in fact, we even started playing other games too. But remember what I said a while back, that on the other side of this barrier, we're not only our friends, but also our family? Well, my family, who I used to visit frequently and have so much fun with, we're still on the other side. Between me and my friend, he took the first step. He reached out to me and asked me whether I'd play that game. But this time, I was going to take the first step. Luckily, there was this game that I really wanted to try out, but it only works with a large group of people. It was one of the more simpler games. So, I messaged my family and asked them, Hey, Let's get on a call and try out this new game. It'll be fun, I said, or something like that. And after a lot of roadblocks, a lot of delays, it eventually happened. And I am confident that we all could agree that we all had a brilliant time. I'm pretty sure by now you all get the gist of what I mean by an MPP and what you do when you find one. If you still don't, I'll explain it shortly. If you find an MVP, you have to find every possible solution you have to break it. Use all your methods possible. Use all your knowledge that you have. But remember in your first or maybe second or third physics class, your teacher would have probably told you about Isaac Newton. But why does every teacher talk about it? It's because of some fancy things he said. Well, one of the things he said was, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. What I can infer from this has nothing to do with physics. What I get is that almost everything in this universe has either an opposite or an equal, or maybe both. So, the opposite of an MVP, you may ask, is a DBB, a don't break barrier. It's a barrier, as it says in the name, that you should not break. You see, after pondering for hours on barriers, what they are, what they mean, what you should do, I realized there are some good barriers in this world, things that prevent people from doing wrong things. The law, the entire idea of the law is to be a barrier. And yet whenever people break this barrier, bad things happen. People get hurt or affected really badly. If we didn't have the law, we'd be anarchists. And if you think anarchy is fine, then tell me, why did people in the past even develop systems like monarchy and best of all, in my opinion, democracy? But very few times, Rarely, the rules, the barriers, the DVDs that others set for you may not be right. Let's just take a quick glance at Nelson Mandela. When he was young, his community weren't given rights that we consider universal today. Going against his masters, his superiors, was a DVD for him. He wasn't supposed to do it. But he disagreed. He became a lawyer joined his community on the political side, fought against apartheid, 
and is now considered one of the world's most exceptional leaders and a forerunner in the pursuit of equality. How? By breaking a deep BP. So, what did we learn from it? Whenever we think an MBB, a DBB should actually be an MBB, we have to stop and show everyone that they're wrong, right? No, that is not what you do at all. Too many times people have told me, we do this and we don't do this. And often I would ask, why or why not? And they would always point out something that I was missing, a key point, a key factor, something right under my nose that I didn't notice. So, whenever you think you see something others don't, the first thing you can do is ask. If one person ignores you, ask another. If one person agrees with you, ask another. If one person disagrees with you, ask why. The key takeaway I want you all to have is the systems we have today are a result of millions and millions of years of our civilization advancing. That is, billions of people coming up with the best solutions they could to face the problems we have. But even then, people of the new era, like how Nelson Mandela was in his time, will find weaknesses in the systems we have the methods we use, and so many more things. And hopefully, they make the changes for the better. And I know they will make changes. Because, as Heraclius said, change is the only constant.